the Social Capital Development Manager at Dog City Council, which I've never learned to say without smiling because I'm not quite sure what it means. Uh, but thankfully, it means that I have the privilege of managing the local area coordination team in the city. Um, given, given the time we have available, there's, there's, there's lots of information about local area coordination. 30 years of evidence from Western Australia, two national papers written that will tell you all you need to know. Um, and I'm really proud to say that Dog City features quite heavily in both. Um, bit of a background, so local area coordination started in Western Australia uh, about 30 years ago, one of the most rural communities you can find, but it works in rural communities and cities. Um, at the time they, they were experiencing the same challenges as we find ourselves in now. Scout finances, uh, real pressure on services, uh, in, terms of, in terms of what was being delivered quite traditional, more often than not, that service sucked people into more services. Um, so we started, we started local area coordination in Derby City in 2012. We started in two wards of the city, uh, Alberton and Arboretum, with, with the notion of testing this, this approach, this, this Western Australian approach, to see if it would work in the city of Derby. We, tried, we, we went with two communities to, to, to kind of test the, the principles in, in different wards within the city. Um, basic premise, instead of asking what services and money do people need, we ask people what does a good life look like. Um, we talk to people about some of the things that they're struggling with, but it very much starts from a place of what your gifts, what your skills, what your passions, what your interests. How can we connect you based on those? So, what do you get? Um, we have, at, the pro at this point in time, we have 10 local area coordinators working in 10 wards of the city. There are 17 wards in the city, and we have an aspiration to, to get local area coordination present in all of those wards. Um, in, terms of, in terms of what you get, a worker in a geographic area that the community recognise as being um, just of interest from a health perspective. I've just done my 12,000 steps. <laughs> I'm hoping my health colleagues will appreciate that. Um, they, they, they have three key bits to the role. So the first bit is give them a laptop, give them a phone, tell them to get out there and embed themselves in that community. So they spend time building relationships with everybody and anybody in that community. From your GPs through to, probably more importantly from our perspective, the lady that does the lollipop crossing who also wants the brownies, the guides, she goes to church, she is a key person in that community. Who we get to know and build a relationship with because what comes next is dependent on those individuals more so than people like me who've got a badge around on it. Uh, so get to know your community then there are kind of two key bits there's an information and advice element to what we do so one-off interactions with people where they will be struggling with something and we will either offer advice, we will support them to connect in with what's going on locally, we will help them to access information that more often than not is, isn't understandable, or we will we'll help them to advocate or self-advocate. Um, the next bit is the, is the bulk of the role, which is where we build longer term relationships with people. We don't have caseloads that we close, we have long term relationships with people, more often than not who are introduced to us, because we don't take referrals, because what we know is language is really important, who have an opportunity to come alongside and receive our support, and we will offer just enough support to help them to tackle the issues that are relevant to them. But again, based on that, what are your gifts, what are your skills, what are you passionate about? How can we use those to connect you into what's going locally, going on locally, therefore building sustainability, relationships, connections, and reducing the need to come to um, so very much starting with what would a vision for a good service, what would a, what would a vision for a good life look like? Helping people access information in a way that makes sense to them, based on their own networks and the networks within their local community. Um, all based around community, and that thing that, that the kind of three questions that we will ask is: What can you do yourself? What can you do based on the connections and relationships that you already have in your local community? And given that we've gone through all of those, where might services fit into them to fill the gaps that still exist? So rather than starting with that, here's a problem, here's the service, let's work through all of these things first before we get to the point of thinking about what services. 
Although if somebody breaks the leg, we will pull the envelope. Um, at the point at which we started the local area coordination program in Derby, there were kind of three key bits. Could we identify people in the local community who weren't known to services but were struggling? And could we, could we support them to stop struggling and stay out of services? Could we find those people that were on the edges? So calling our front door service, knocking on GP's doors, and could we support them to build connections, relationships and resilience, which kept them out of services? And if they needed to get in, to help them navigate that system in a way that made sense to them so that they could get in and out as quickly as possible. There are a number of people who we've supported who have been ready for surgery but then not been able to do it because of the circumstances they're living in. And we've been able to support them to get in and out and on with it as quickly as possible. And that third bit of those people that were already dependent on the services that we offer, could we support those people to be less dependent? Um, and what we know is, five years on, that we can. And I guess the good news is it creates better outcomes for everybody. So better outcomes for those individuals, because they build those relationships, they build those connections, and they have ownership over what's going on. Better outcomes financially, because it means that we need less of the services that they would traditionally have gone to. It reduces dependency, and more importantly, based on that Western Australian model, local area coordination is sat within services. And it's sat within services because there is a big bit that I think is untapped around the intelligence that's generated through local area coordination and how we use that to reform some of the services that are already going on. Um, stories are always best. Um, so just a, just a couple. Our colleagues, our colleagues from public health. Um, have done some work with us over the last sort of two, three years to really understand what's going on in the local communities and to use some of the health intelligence that you're probably more familiar with than I am to really start to think about how we target this asset-based approach in communities. So a colleague, senior analyst, analyst from Public Health worked with all the local area coordinators to think about all of their work to see Dill and Ward. Um, and some of the key things that were going on from a, from a health and social care perspective, what were the key drivers? We also used the, the vulnerabilities in the index that's available to us through our, through our relationships with colleagues in public health. And again, this is the deal award. And when we looked at this, the darker spots are those areas where, in theory, there is more need. Um, we then link that to some of the experience data that's available to us to start to think about who are the groups in that local community that we might need to target. And you'll see this is a particular street um, that the locals refer to as Death Street, because you go there, you don't tend to come back out again. Um, so we knew that, but what we were able to do, given this assets-based approach, and the fact that the local area coordinator had been working in this neighborhood for two years and had really good relationships with those community connectors, the lady that works the crossing, the people that run the local healthy living centre, that we were then able to think about what can we do to manage this. The local area coordinators are connected into the community support teams uh, around GP practices. And so Roger, the local area coordinator, started to have a conversation that wasn't focused on the data, but had that data in mind when we then started to build conversations and relationships with people in the local area. He was introduced to Harry. Care coordinator introduced him to Harry. Um, Harry had loads of things going on. Uh, it was around isolation. The majority of the people who were working with Harry was around isolation. I know that one's um, he, he needed support to connect into what was going on in the local community. There were, there were multiple silos that were going on for him. So he was involved in housing. Housing provider wanted to kick him out because he'd got loads of motorcycle parts in his house and he'd got a dog which wasn't looking after properly. Um, medication he wasn't taking. That's because it was really bloody complicated and there were about four different medications that he was taking at the time. Um, so we helped him address that. Harry introduced him to his son, Tom. Um, Tom was on the autistic spectrum. It was Tom's motorcycle parts that were in Harry's house. Um, he and his dad used to build motorcycles and that was one of the things that he was trying to do to engage his dad. So from a housing provider point of view, the local area coordinator was able to help him navigate that bit work with him to talk to the, lo the local housing officer to begin to challenge some of that stuff. Tom introduced us to Mary. Mary's great. Mary 
There is the lady that's got the mobility scooter. Um, and a lot of the neighbours in that local community talk to Mary because she's got the mobility scooter. And when they need to go into town, it's Mary who's got the mobility scooter and she would lend them to them. But Mary also had to issue with alcohol that, that Tom was supporting the week. And I guess the point that I'm making here is this is stuff that we don't know about. This is this real local intelligence coming here, which if we start to think about it and use it, starts to provide lots of opportunities to think about what everything else starts to look like. Mary introduces the bill. Bill was also introduced to us by the local fire service. Um, he was also known to the Safe and Neighbourhood team. He got some issues with benefits. He also had epilepsy that wasn't being managed properly. Um, the local area coordinator was actually in the in the house with Bill at the point in time where he had a seizure and nearly fell on the pen into, into his eye, which would have caused all sorts of issues for you guys. But on that particular occasion, we were in the right place at the right time. We were also introduced to the community connector, Rita, who runs a number of the clubs, and also looks out for Bill, and has now been introduced to Mary and Tom. Um, and the final guy, Sid, who is somebody that's new to us, but that bit of being on the ground, getting to know people, having a sense of what's going on has meant that that this, that this particular area now has loads of lines going across it with lots of connections and lots of opportunities and lots of people contributing as opposed to receiving services. Um, in terms of what it is that we do, we're currently working with everyone, we, we currently deliver what 820 level one information and advice episodes across the city at this point in time. We're working with 703 people. 30% of our introductions are coming from care coordinators and GP practices. Care coordinators are really getting it, what it is that we do, and we have a great relationship with them because essentially we're the eyes and ears on the ground to begin to be able to connect some of those things. 40% uh, of the people are over 60, and you won't be surprised that isolation and loneliness is the way that we're trying to work it through. It works. We know it works. Uh, Derby University did a study eight months in, which was pretty tough actually, given the approach that we were taking. Um, looked at the people that we were supporting. It was about 50 people at that point in time. Um, two local area coordinators, 50 people. They interviewed those people, looked at their journey up until that point in systems and services, thought about what would have happened if the local area coordinator hadn't been present, and then kind of did some calculations around that. And they talked about £800,000 being saved from social, health and social care department. We've recently had a social return on the investment study done independently by uh, a, an independent think tank, and they suggested that in terms of local area coordination, there's a kind of a pound, one pound invested, four pound return, and what things that we do. More importantly, it works for colleagues. A really interesting point care coordinators um, and GP practices because of the way community support teams are, are organised around place, which doesn't necessarily work for community members, I have to say. Um, we have a couple of care coordinators who straddle areas where there is a local area coordinator and there is no, area, no local area coordinator. And from their perspective, there is a significant difference in terms of what it is that we're able to do with regard to support. In terms of what we've learned, the beauty of what it is that we do is that it's really simple, it's really straightforward, and it works for people because it helps them to simplify that really complex service system. And I think there's a challenge around how we think about simplicity and some of the stuff that we do moving forward. Um, I guess for us, what's next is the local area coordination team. We know this works, and it's about how, how we grow this based on some of the great relationships that we've had with commissioners in the CCG in terms of really understanding what it takes to make this work. Strong design, leadership, integrity to values, recruiting the right people with the right values, and giving it space to do what it needs to do. 